Hey everybody, uh, good to have you here. Today we're, we're looking at all the anime for, for spring and we're, we're gonna... Tier list, yeah! This is my first time doing one of these. Uh, I mean, not my first time ever, but you know, my first time doing it live on camera. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Make sure you drink lots of water. You like the new, uh, oh, new stream notification we got up there? I figured that out myself, I'm very proud. Okay, yeah, so people want an explanation of the tiers. So we got banger, okay, mid, trash, and then good trash. Some trash is just trash. Some trash is, is both trash and good. I wanna make sure to differentiate those. Uh, yeah, loops around. Uh, yes, it's it's below trash. It's fine. It'll make sense. Or it won't. Yeah, it's a bell curve. Exactly, Trey. Anime horseshoe theory. Yes. Yeah, that's it. Lots of ways to put it. Horseshoe theory is better than bell curve, actually. Yeah, we got MAL here to aid in the discussion. So we'll start with Mashal. That one's a adaptation of a Shonen Jump manga that's been running for about a year now. I really, really like the manga for this one. Like, I've, I'm have i fully caught up on that. The anime, as a result of being caught up, isn't hitting me quite as hard. The basic gist is, like, what if One Punch Man went to Hogwarts? Also, Hogwarts is in this world where everybody has magic powers, and if you don't have magic powers, they genocide you. It's pretty dark. So the main character is... He, he doesn't have any magic, but he's super strong, and he's got to pretend to do magic by using his insane strength to just, like, pick stuff up and break it, basically. If you're a fan of shitty people getting punched really, really hard in the face, you know, the, the classic One Piece asshole gets hit panel, then this is definitely an animated uh, that, or manga that you'd like to watch. Let's be real, it's Black Clover, but good. I... I, I that was, that was something said by chat. I neither confirm nor deny that. If you want the perspective of someone who hasn't read the manga, I'm super in love with Mashal after only one episode. That's good to hear. I had to, like, leave it off the ones to watch list because it was just, like, the production value's, like, a step below your Demon Slayers or your Hero Akas in terms of, like, how good the animation is. It's still really good, don't get me wrong. I just prefer it in manga form. So I'm going to put it in okay tier, but... Be aware that I think the manga is a banger, and also, I think if you haven't read the manga, it might be a banger. Is that on High Dive? It's on Crunchyroll, actually. It's got- the manga's got some really amazing artwork. If you haven't- it's on the Jump app, so it's really accessible. You can, like, read the whole thing for, like, five dollars a month on your phone. It's got some insanely beautiful art for, like, the magic effects. And also, it captures the whole Hogwarts vibe but without any of the baggage, if that's something you, you are in the market for. Yeah, and it, it's got some real good jokes too. What I really like about the magic system is it like dips into like some eldritch places and stuff like that, and the manga art really captures that well. Taking a dump right now, good to know. Thanks for telling me. So let's keep going. Kuma 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 Bear Season 2 is next. So I, I haven't watched up to Season 2, but I, I thought season one was pretty mid, so I would not be surprised if season two was also mid. No offense to the Kuma 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 Bear fans out there. It's like, you know, it's it's a cute little isekai thing, but it didn't really grab me. And I just, I enjoyed uh, Bofuri, which is the same sort of ballpark of like cute girls doing cute things mixed with uh, trapped in an MMO story. All right, let's keep moving. My Love Story with Yamada at level 999. That one, I would say, is a banger. If you're a fan of, like, rom-coms, and you're... Especially if you're a little bit tired of high school rom-coms, this one's about, like, a college-age girl, professional gamer, who's, like, just graduating from high school, who, like, fall in love through an MMO. It's got a really great sense of humor. Really, really really sharp characterization and it shows like you know he's a little less mature this one's on crunchyroll if you're interested in watching it also comparable to otakoi you know it's it's just nice to have like a love story that has you know people with more adult concerns 
not the author, the director uh, of MMO Junkie. Reincarnated for a, or God, it's actually so difficult to, to like parse the poster of, I got a cheat skill, skill in another world and became unraveled in this one too. And let's see, where is it? Reincarnated for a second time. Or is that, is that second time? Or is that cheat skill? It's hard to tell. Uh, yeah, cheat skill is definitely trash. No question about that. It like has the most poor me protagonist I've seen in like a very long time of anime. Like the main character, he's overweight and he's never had friends because uh, he, he's overweight and everybody hates him, including his family because he's overweight. But his grandpa liked him uh, and his grandpa decided to let him inherit his house, which made his family disown him even harder than they did for him being fat and ugly. If you think the level of abuse that like Harry Potter is subjected to by the Dursleys is ridiculous, this is like that cranked up to 11 doesn't even cover it, like 15. I think it's from the same creator as Fruit of Evolution, which categorized its pudgy uh, isekai protagonist as literally subhuman before he ate enough of the fruit of evolution to evolve into an isekai pro tag. Author just like has a real hate on for, for fat guys, but then, or is a fat guy with a lot of self-hatred. I don't know. But then the protagonist always gets super skinny after getting leveled up. It's, um, yeah, I don't know. Reki Kawahara did it a lot better with Excel World. That's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Ex Excel Saga. That's a different one. Also, very good. Do not mix up Excel Saga and Excel World. Excel World actually handled its, like, protag being overweight really well, I thought. I should finish up the summary. He inherits a house from his grandpa, and then his grandpa had an isekai portal in his house and, like, a bunch of OP weapons and skills, so he levels up in the other world and comes back and he's skinny. Real dumb. Anyway, next thing in the banger tier, Insomniacs After School. This is just the whole vibe. 29 minutes to do four titles. Three hour stream, go burr. All right, we'll, we'll keep this, we'll pick it up. Premise is as simple as it gets. The main character is an insomniac, kind of has trouble getting on with his classmates and just dealing in general. But then one day he finds this cute classmate of his sleeping in the observatory of their school. They realize they both have the same problem and they just sort of click start going on night adventures, hanging out in the observatory. Yazzie and I have been watching this one together. It's like one of our favorite shows of the season. It's real, real sweet. It's got the same sort of like chill night vibes as Call of the Night, as people have said in chat. A little more small towny. Uh, Parallax Solutions. I'm, cur I'm currently dealing with some real insomnia problems and the first episode describes the existence perfectly without blaming the characters for their condition. Yeah, it's, I'd say it's a pretty accurate depiction of insomnia as somebody who, you know, has dealt with that in the past and knows people going through it now. It hits it pretty, pretty well. Anybody who's having insomnia right now, that is rough and I am sorry. But this anime is like perfect for feeling like you're not alone with it. And just like, you know, chill, hanging out at night, watching the night sky vibes. It's so good. It's so cute. And the main characters are just great. The character writing is phenomenal. It's got like a nice realistic style to it too. You know, it feels very grounded. I, yeah, it's just great anime. Can't recommend it enough. Manga is also pretty good from what I understand. I got a cheat skill in another world is peak good trash. It's cringe and enjoyable, bad, and the shitty underdeveloped romance is great. No, no, good, I think we need to, so like trash can be enjoyable or not. Good trash is something that is both trashy and good at the same time, um, which I don't think cheat skill really clears, especially since it's got like hentai tier animation. No, good trash is below trash for a reason, and that reason is horseshoe theory. Horseshoe theory is the idea that things at opposite ends of, the, of spectrums can be closer to each other because they are at extremes than um, the things that are near the middle. Uh, so, you know, in, in 
it's it's a somewhat debunked theory in politics, but I think it applies very well when it comes to media. Okay, next up, Eden Zero. Uh, I think that pretty clearly belongs in mid. Maybe it's okay. I don't know. I, I've watched a couple episodes of of the first season on on Netflix, and I mean, it's fairy tale in space, so I feel like mid is a pretty appropriate place to put that. But like. My perspective on what mid really means has shifted since watching three and a quarter seasons of The Seven Deadly Sins, or, f sorry, plus the four episode mini season. So uh, watching a lot of Seven Deadly Sins for a roast that you folks requested, uh, we do. Yeah, I, I would say it's mid, but like, it's definitely a more enjoyable mid than Seven Deadly Sins. Uh, God, what is this next one? Is this? Is this re uh, uh, isekai for a second time? I can't. Okay, so yeah, this one also going straight in the trash. I think it's more enjoyable trash than cheat skill on the grounds that it doesn't take itself quite as seriously. Like the main character, so the, the premise is the main character was an isekai hero, saved the world, got reincarnated back in our world as a baby again, and then got reincarnated in the other world again again when there was you know like big demon war going on he's kind of a dipshit yeah better than cheat skill but not outstanding in any way i'm of two minds about it because like i, I kind of thought the joke where like the serious sundere girl immediately went full darkness the second she found out protag kun was her protag kun it's like please sit on me sir that was i mean you know Darkness, but unironically. I don't know how I feel about that, but like it got a chuckle out of me, but that's pretty much all I remember about the series, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, the knight became his chair. Um, yep, Pokemon Horizons. Oh shit, that should be on this list. I guess it wasn't included by the tier maker, but I would say that that's either banger or at least okay so far. There's no official way to watch that. But yeah, new Pokemon's really good. I'd call that one a banger. Like, I, the only reason I'm hesitant to, like, certify it as a banger is because, like, it could fall off. Weekly series do fall off, but, like, what I've seen so far with Yazzie has been really good. Captain Pikachu with the gunbuster pose. Yeah, that does kind of make it... I don't think Ash is going to come back, Soga. I don't know. I, I think, like, maybe, maybe as, like, a cameo down the road, that would be fun. But they're kind of doing their own thing, and I hope that, that they don't try to drag him back in. New Pokemon is really good is a phrase I haven't heard in 10 years. You should have heard it around the time that Sun and Moon came out, because the Sun and Moon anime was also excellent. Yeah, it does feel like an alternate universe, almost. Very different portrayal of the Kanto region than what we see in past series, so... Ash might come back for movies. That would be... that'd be fun. I mean, I... If he does come back, I'd like it to be in, like, a fleeting role, like, uh, Red, uh, in Pokemon Gold and Silver. You know, that, that, like, post-credits almost extra scene. But yeah, I, I, I'd say, I'd say Banger might fall to okay. Ash is still the movie AU's pro tag. That's what the special episode was about. Okay, so they're still doing Ash in the movies. Okay. Okay, next up is the Galaxy Next Door. I'm going to put that in okay. It's a series about a mangaka who is also a landlord. He inherited an apartment building and he's trying to keep his little siblings fed on his manga creator's salary, which by the way, landlording in Japan, little different dynamic from landlording in North America. Still not a job, but it's a little bit more of a job and a little bit less profitable. Real estate in general is a little less profitable in Japan. Six out of 10 show. Yeah, I, I would say, I would say six to like a low seven. But yeah, this, this guy, so he gets a new assistant who moves into the apartment building that his family owns and she's like really enthusiastic and talented it turns out that she's an alien princess who learned about manga and how to draw manga from reading his manga so she's his biggest fan and she asks to marry him because he touches her butt stinger and that is like sex for her species so now he's got to take responsibility kind of silly yeah, it's a boring slice of life nonsense. It definitely reads like something that a 
lonely and sad mangaka maybe <laughs> wrote to, you know, fulfill some of his wishes. It's kind of the vibe I get. She feels very self-indulgent. All right, let's 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 keep going. The reason why Riliana ended up at the Duke's mansion, I believe, yeah, so that's based on a webtoon. Really interesting premise for a webtoon or for like an isekai story. This girl gets reincarnated into specifically the world of her favorite fantasy regency romance slash mystery novel as the victim of the murder mystery that's supposed to be solved and sort of inserts herself into high society politics in order to save her life. Really interesting premise, well produced so far. It was pretty close to making my list. Um, I'm like waffling between banger and okay. I'm enjoying it, but I think I'll switch to reading the manga. I think, yeah, no, it's it's got like a really great premise. I just feel like the way the anime is executed, the pacing's a little bit off and tonally it like shifts between comedy and more serious stuff not as effectively as i'd like you know what actually yeah okay is too we're gonna we're gonna change the okay tier to good tier yeah yeah that feels that feels better okay is just a little too close to mid i, I felt like that was a positive thing but you know we'll say good yeah, I'll capitalize the G in good. Sorry, that was bugging me too. I just didn't want to, unless somebody asked me. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm glad. I, I was like, should I should I go adjust that on the back end? Will that annoy people? Or is it not being capitalized going to annoy people more? Good to know. I'm learning things about the human condition. Next up is My Home Hero, which I'm going to have to throw in the good trash tier. Like, it's, because it's got, like, good ideas. It's got, like, some really fun plot ideas behind it. But it's executed like a Tommy Wiseau movie. Like, it's got, like, an interesting story. I will give you guys that. But if you ta think about, like, how it's paced, the delivery of some of the lines, the fact that, like, the main character finds out that his daughter is being abused by hearing her boyfriend walk down the street bragging to his buddies about how he's going to beat up his girlfriend the next night. It's so cartoonish in how it depicts what it's about. I don't know. I know a lot of people, uh, same writer as I'm standing on a million lives. That makes a lot of sense. It's got about the same level of, like, edge and relation to reality. Yeah, real. I did not hit her, except it's, I did hit her, and it was great, and I'm gonna do it again, cause I'm a badass Yakuza guy. Yeah, it's not subtle at all, but it's fun. I definitely enjoyed watching the first episode. Yeah, that one's going on the trash list. I'll, I'll have more to say about it there. And the only way to stop me is to kill me, boyfriend. Yeah, he does literally say that. I feel like the manga of it might be better, but like, it's such a ridiculous and unrealistic depiction of how abuse happens. Also, the way they set up a parallel with the main character, because he, so he like murders the abusive boyfriend and he's trying to hide the body, but then the abusive boyfriend's dad, who's like this big time loan shark Yakuza guy, is all like, I have to look out for my son. And, and they're like, you see they're opposites. Whereas the one, he wants his daughter to be happy and not beat up. And the other, he wants his son to just be able to beat up any woman he wants and never have consequences for anything. Because that's what it means to be a good dad. It's just... Yeah. Stop arguing perfectly. You'll make me enjoy it less. I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that. I feel like the manga could be good, but OP and ED are great. Is good trash still a recommendation? Yes, I would say. I don't know who said it, but as someone once said, some people just need killing. That is generally the theme of my home hero, yeah. Violence is first rate. I will give it that. That's why I'm putting it in the, it in the good trash tier, because it's like 100% very enjoyable. It's just also off, you know? I haven't caught, watched the anime, but I'm all caught up on the manga. Is the manga good? I would love to, I'd love to know. Um, also love how just instantly on board his wife is with the murder thing. That's support. That's goals. You know, that's what a relationship should be. You stab somebody or, or beat them over the head with a rice cooker, as the case may be, and your wife stands by you. 
I'll take our daughter home. You go chop up that guy in the bathtub. Macbeth was ahead of its time. Yeah, for real. Let's move on. All right, uh, Demon Slayer. Demon Slayer, that goes in mid... No, nah, I'm kidding. That goes in the banger tier. <laughs> Fit in the instant classic status, I think, already. You know, there's, there's no denying its quality as an anime production. I do somewhat get bothered when people are like, this has the best animation of all time, because, like, Mob Psycho clears, Ranking of Kings clears... So many things clear Demon Slayer in terms of animation quality. Great compositing. Ufotable production value. Top tier. Pretty darn good story writing as Shonen goes. Just like hits all the beats perfectly. Doesn't waste any time. Demon Slayer is two different shows. One is mid, the other is fire. I can kind of agree with that a little bit. Best animation is code for it looks pretty when I see it. Yeah, and that makes me sad because like... It's one best animation every year that it's been out. You know, it deserves a lot of recognition for a lot of stuff, but not that. When it turns on the Sakuga, it is pretty elite, but like, the thing is, it's like, the compositing is what takes it up to the next level. You know, if it was just the, the drawings themselves without all of the extra CGI, uh, all of the special effects layered on, the like, communication between those teams, then it'd just be about on par with My Hero Academia. Mob Psycho deserves all of the awards that Demon Slayer has gotten. Chainsaw Man might cl clear it this year, actually. That would be... An I'm interested to see how that goes down. Bochi, too. Bochi the Rock. Better animation than Demon Slayer. There is a very long list of things that have better animation, specifically talking about the drawing-to-drawing -drawing composition of the motion, not the overall picture, we got uh, The Dangers in My Heart, and that is also a banger. It's probably like the lower end of banger. It's it's just a cute little middle school rom-com about this 13-year-old edgelord who's like, I'm gonna kill all the popular kids in class. I love reading books about murder. But then when he actually is alone with the most popular girl in school, he finds out she's kind of a fucking weirdo and they really get along. Like, he keeps trying to be an edgelord, but it just keeps being adorable. That one's also on High Dive. High Dive is, like, the place to go for Slice of Life stuff. Uh, all right, next up. I don't want to make the banger tier too overweighted, but we just got a lot of bangers. Gundam Witch from Mercury Season 2 is going hard, dropping some major bombshells recently. If you like Gundam, G-Witch is a You know, it's, it's one of the best new Gundams in a very long time, I think. Kind of like Utena meets Gundam, but then it goes in its own direction. Great world building. Fights are excellent. Amazing openings and endings. You are right. G-Witch is like great. The, the, the cliffhanger at the end of last season was like impeccable and they have just kept escalating it from there. I haven't seen enough of Yuri is my jo job to fully judge it yet. The first episode just kind of hit me as oscillating between good and mid. I want to give it the benefit of the doubt because I've heard it gets better, but like the, the first episode really didn't grab me at all in terms of how the characters are written or anything. Nice animation though. A lot of people say in Yuri is my job is their favorite. Yeah, I, I, I've heard it like picks up too. Skip and Loafer, definitely cream of the crop. Oh yeah, that's going in the banger tier. This is just such a good season for Slice of Life and Romance. I would say Skip and Loafer is the top of the top tier for that though. The animation is just so good. The characters are so well written. Captures the dynamics of high school drama very accurately without necessarily painting anybody as the bad guy. Some of the most likable characters I've seen in anime in a really long time. So the premise is this girl moves from like the absolute sticks to Tokyo to go to high school. She's like the top of her class in her small town. She's also the top of her class at this elite Tokyo high school. And her plan is to become a big time government official and save her local economy. But you know, first she's got to figure out how to navigate social life in Tokyo. And it's just really fun. Uh, it's got like a really broad array of characters premise almost reminds me of your name yeah i can kind of see that it's i mean it's a way smaller town than your name your name is like 
a decently sized resort town. She lives in like Inaka, like like deep, deep boonies. 23 kids in her whole school. Basically Higurashi levels of isolation. Uh, that one girl in Skip and Loafer trying too hard to impress the guy makes him uh, may want to hate her. But realistically, those are very real emotions for people. Yeah, no, it's great. Like the red haired girl is like kind of a shit, but in a way that's super understandable. You want to root for her to be better. She's not a bad person, just trying too hard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it, it like captures that being socially oblivious and trying to make friends. It's just really good. Skip and Loafer is really good. Can't recommend it enough. Next up is Dead Mount Death Play. And I'm kind of waffling on if I want to put that in good or banger. It's like the absolute upper end of good or the bottom end of banger is kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, I'd say banger till further notice. The thing is, I haven't seen enough yet to like get a full beat on it, but I also really trust Ryogo Narita as a storyteller. And like, oh man, it's got that edge down. It's just oh, it's so fun. Uh, next up, the hero is already dead. I'm gonna put that one in good trash, where the legendary hero is dead. I'm gonna put that one in good trash. Had some really good jokes. I, I, I fucking, I love the joke right at the start where the main character, his, his like friend comes up on him like sliding a woman's stocking on a daikon radish because it looks like a thigh. And she's just like, what kind of freak are you? And he's like, no, this is any, any man who sees a nice plump thigh-like radish would do this. And she's like, no, only you, you're a complete freak. And these two old guys who are walking by just like quickly stuff their radishes into their coats and walk on. So funny. It's a weird one. But the, so the premise is the, there's this legendary hero going around trying to like save the world from the Demon King, standard stuff. The main character accidentally kills him with a pitfall trap that he had meant for a demon. So this necromancer buddy of the main character gives all of the legendary hero's powers and body to the protagonist, but he's such like a piss weak villager tier, no magic loser that he can't maintain the body so it keeps rotting. And there's just a lot of fun stuff to it. I'd say it's good trash, it's fun. Weekend at the Heroes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, very weekend at Bernie's. I'll see what I think of it after, you know, the, the next couple episodes, but um, great OP too, really fun. Not the best OP this season. After that, uh, what? I can't even remember the name of that. Some, some other fucking isekai thing. Ah, yeah, the aristocrats otherworldly adventure serving gods who go too far. Right, right. Yeah, that one's mid as shit. I don't even want to give it trash status even though it's it's got like siscon brocon stuff good trash you think i'm like waffling between trash and mid because i don't think it like the first episode didn't really hit anything that would make me like go out and be like oh that's you know that's that's super trashy and enjoyable good trash potential in the manga but it took three episodes to get there I've only seen the first episode of that one, so maybe I will revise my my feelings by the end of the season when I do the, the hottest trash. But yeah, I would say that Aristocrat is just mid. And honestly, to me, depending on where it lands in mid, like there's upper mid and then there's lower mid, but like, I would rather watch trash than something mid. Yeah, all right, let's move on. Um, Sacrificial Princess and the King of Beasts is good. It's a cute little fairy tale uh beauty and the beast inspired type thing I, I really like the first step or i didn't really like but i like the first episode of it it's sort of a chill little story about a hundred years ago mankind made peace with this race of man-eating beasts and every year they sacrifice one human girl to the to maintain the the truce but this year the sacrificial princess is this she's real sassy and the, the Beast King kind of vibes with her and stuff happens. It's got really interesting world building. They like go into sort of the politics of the Beast race and why they need to eat humans based on like where they live and stuff. A lot of bangers this season though. And one of them is Tengoku Daimakyo, AKA Heavenly Delusion. Correct something that I said in my seasonal video. This is available on Hulu if you're in the United States. Uh, not on Disney Plus. It's on Disney Plus in Canada. That's why I got confused. A really interesting post-apocalyptic adventure story about this guy with some kind of like destiny and this 
other guy whose brain is in the body of a girl gets explained who's sort of trying to protect him the the, the jewel to his ellie they're traveling across tokyo and and the greater tokyo area trying to find this apocalyptic sanctuary called heaven and then meanwhile we also see what's happening inside heaven um where these kids one of whom looks suspiciously like uh the the boy but yeah so they're on the outside in this post-apocalyptic wasteland that's like ravaged by crazy monsters and whatnot and then there's also this like school of kids who've been you know brought up inside this shelter who are like starting to wonder what's outside the outside you know they've got this like terrarium area that they can live in definitely not a promise promise neverland orphanage nope not at all it might be it might be so like in episode two there's like this scene where one of them does something a human being shouldn't be able to do and it, the rest of it seems grounded enough that like i don't know it seems like there's something something fucky going on with these kids and there's some really interesting mysteries there is it confirmed the scenes in heaven are happening contemporaneously? It's implied, but that might be a twist, you know? We'll, we'll see. Um, really like these parallel posters. They're really cool. Uh, <gasps> yeah, the monsters are crazy. Uh, would I consider... Uh, what's the name? Kiruko. Would I consider Kiruko trans rep? I would say it definitely is speaking to parts of the trans experience. Like it's literally a man's brain trapped in a woman's body. I would say that trans, like trans viewers will probably get a lot out of it in the same way that they would out of Onimai. Yeah, you know, like like it's, it's, it's a story that I think will speak to a lot of trans viewers, whether or not it's intentionally trans representation. But you know, there's also like in episode two in, in heaven, there's at least one couple among the those teenagers there who are lesbians so like it's definitely a show that's aware of the lgbtq this season for trans rap you want to watch skip and loafer yes yeah so i forgot to mention that but yeah um her aunt who takes her in in tokyo might seem seems trans i think they don't really call attention to it she's just you know living her life kids in the institution have some gender queer elements yeah so yeah, Heavenly Delusion, I think, is playing around with gender ideas and stuff like that. It's not really the main focus, it's just interesting thematic stuff there. Yeah, it's subtle enough that you probably wouldn't even see it if you weren't looking for it. So, okay, so uh, somebody who is uh, a Drift Finch, who has read the manga, says that Heavenly Delusion definitely does get into queer identities and uh, trans issues in the series. Okay, that's really cool. Hopefully it doesn't become one of those ones where, you know, people get in fights over it. They do go into now in Skip and Loafer's manga and do it really sweetly. Well, I, I, I'm, I'm excited to, to see how that goes. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the people who fight about that stuff will do it no matter what. You're right. Uh, next up is my one-hit kill sister, and that's going right in the good trash. I think it would just be regular trash if it didn't have such, like, peak animation it goes so hard in the fight scenes and the comedy that it just elevates what is otherwise bottom tier humor the, the main character gets isekai'd his sister is down so bad for him that she puts herself in a coma to be isekai'd with him he doesn't get any special powers but she gets all the special powers basically in order to get her to do anything protag kun has to promise to like sell his body to his sister it's it's trashy as fuck but uh it's fun definitely the siscon version of multi-hit mom it's fun it's very 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 horny but like whenever the fight scenes pop off they just hit hard it's so good because the mangaka's only major interaction with somebody of opposing gender is sister brother uh you know it's also just a just a fetish it's just a fetish Let's move on. Dr. Stone. I'd say Dr. Stone is good. The anime adaptation isn't quite a banger, I wouldn't say. You know, I, I really like the manga a lot. I really like the, the anime too, but it's just, it's a little shy, like Mashal. You know, it's, it's, 
in that same realm as Mashal, where, like, if the anime adaptation was a little stronger, I think it could be pushed up to banger tier. As it stands, it's it's a fun, good show. Having read the manga, where the new season's going is, is one of, I would say, the best parts of Dr. Stone. Um, like, it's a really exciting and interesting place to be. Okay, let's move on. Th okay, this is the one anime this season I haven't seen. Um, so I don't know where to put it. Ow No Orchestra. And the reason I haven't seen it is because it's not fucking streaming anywhere. Seemed like it could be good. Seemed like it could be mid. I'm not sure. I'm going to just put it at the bottom of the, the list for now because I, I I can't form an opinion about it. I think the some of the people producing it are trying to like license it on their own anime platform. On the other hand, Birdie Wing goes right in the banger tier. Fuck, I love that series. I'm so glad it got two seasons. It's one of those ones where if you know, you know, and if you don't know, there's a lesbian golf mafia that has an underground golf bunker where they do golf death games. Uh, and like the entire bunker can transform like a transformer into, it's, it's Sunrise, the Gundam studio, doing a thing about golf and like, Instead of leaning into the golf, it leans into the anime, and it's so fucking good. JoJo, but gay girls, and golf instead of punching, yeah. Golf crimes, yeah, so like, the two main characters are this rich golf girl from an elite golf family who's who's been raised to be the ultimate golfer, and then this other girl who's uh, this, this golf hustler from the wrong side of the tracks, and, and they meet and they have like an instant connection. Yeah, Yugi Golf is another good way to put it. It's just like, oh, it's so good. Yeah, next up, Cafe Terrace and its goddesses. That's going in the good trash. That is where if you are missing the high quality cheesecake animation, that's where you go to find it. Kind of a simple story. Main character inherits his grandma's house, which is attached to a cafe by the side of a beach. He is all about the money at first and wants to tear it down to uh, build a parking lot because that's the more profitable thing to have next to a beach. But Quince, but not taken as seriously, cool girl is best girl. Yeah, it does kind of remind me of quintessential quintuplets in terms of the characterization. But yeah, when he moves into this, his grandma's old house, he finds that there's five stupidly hot girls all crashing there who work for his grandma um, and they they try to they try to like convince him not to sell the house because they want to keep living there. And the way that they do that is trying to seduce him. So honestly, it's like the most realistic setup for a harem I've seen in a really long time. Normally, you know, it's just incredibly hot ch women chasing after the world's middest man because reasons. So it like makes a little bit more sense than that. But then also, like, you know, obviously he turns out to be less of a shitty person over time. I summarized the last Birdie Wing episode uh, for people on Discord. I had so much fun because one of the characters was such a grand drama queen. I can't wait to catch up on it. I cannot wait. They pay rent with boobs and butts. No, they pay rent by working in the cafe. Um, the One of the fun things is they're like throwing themselves at the protag for like very transparently ulterior motive reasons and he just like he doesn't give a fuck he's like uh-huh really 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 well drawn everything did i already rank kizuna no alele no we're getting to that wait is that one in these if it is kizuna no alele is going in the trash of trash honestly i would say that it's mid except that it tried to sell me nfts yeah the kizuna i anime it's so bad it, they didn't even put it on this list. And they put no Al No Orchestra here, and that's not even streaming anywhere. So there's a Kizuna Eye anime, and in the ed, end credits of the last episode, they, like, set it up as this world-building thing, and it's like, so you're trying to win the Lapin d'Or, which is this trophy for the best VTuber, because she's going to a VTuber high school for VTubers to train to be like Kizuna Eye. And then the, the rabbit mascot is like, so do you know what the Lapin door is? And it's like, oh yeah, it's, it's a big award. It's based on a rabbit. Cool. And you know the Lapin door is an NFT. What's an NFT? And then it just goes into this big explanation of what fucking NFTs are. Because <laughs> uh, Keys and I tried to sell some NFTs 
a while back. It might be the lowest I've seen anime sink. This is absolutely fucking abysmal. So yeah, just imagine that right at the bottom of the trash bin. Next up, we're talking about the banger of bangers this season. Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers. Fuck, I love this anime so much. Yeah, we almost do need another tier of a banger for this one. It's so fucking good. I, I don't know... I don't know what the people on MAL are smoking that they could possibly give this a 6.8. But yeah, yeah, no, Magical Destroyers is just like, it's fucking epic as shit. I can say epic because it's set in 2011, so that wasn't, that was slightly less cringe back then. Yeah, it's about this alternate timeline where like anime shit's illegal and the resistance out of Akihabara led by Otaku Hiro and his three magical girl fighters have to battle the the fucking all, all the enemy soldiers have fucking this face just painted on their head it's it's great animation feels like something that gynax would have come up with in their prime it's bibri animation studios who haven't made much but they did make quintessential quintuplets sequel and you know a lot of other really solid anime productions love mad destroy just <laughs> I love everything about this. The The title graphic is like this graffiti mashup of like magical girl font, fucking hard ass action anime font. And then that's a, that's a motherfucking Jojo reference. That's a motherfucking Jojo reference in the title. It, it's just, it, it, it's working on so many levels. The OP uses like JPEG artifact Sakuga. It's next, next level. The opening is half YouTube poop. Kinda. Yeah, it... It's just... It's aesthetically on it operating on, on like a whole different plane from most anime. Alright, next up, Marginal Service. So that is going in mid. That is that is some true mid, if I've ever seen it. Fuck, I was disappointed with that. Like, so the premise is, it's like men in black but for cryptids so there's a secret police service but also they're like sentai construction workers and oh man that's a very naked poster but yeah they're like sentai construction workers and they like fight crypt cryptids hidden among society try to keep them in line try to keep them from doing cryptid crimes and like that sounds like such a good fucking premise right but i have never seen a more generic predictable and i mean not never but like the episode opens we're in the middle of like the main character back when he was a cop chasing down a criminal in a back alley with his partner who is black the partner immediately gets shot and dies um he goes to the the chief and the chief is like you're a loose cannon you we're fucking kicking you off you can't you can't be investigating this then later they find out the chief is a cryptid who was doing the cryptid crimes it's such a waste of a good premise. The action sucks. They got some fun, like they, they, there was this fun moment where all of the main characters got their own title cards, like they were being added to Smash. But other than that, it's just the most tepid, a marginal anime, you're exactly right. It's so fucking excruciatingly boring. Tokyo Mew Mew New, I'm putting that in good. Yazzie might come down and beat me up for not putting it in banger. Yeah, I'd say it's a well-produced adaptation of the manga. But yeah, Tokyo Mew Mew New, if you like magical girls, it's a good time. Yezzy's... Oh, shit! Oh, no! Chet! I'm gonna die! Are we good, baby? Are we good? Fine, then I'm putting it back down in good, if I'm gonna die anyway. <laughs> well, well, Chet, this might be my last stream. We better keep going. Uh, this is uh, Too Cute Crisis. I'm gonna put that one in good tier. Cute little comedy. It's about this alien investigator who comes to Earth to assess our resources and if, if her empire should just strip mine our whole planet and, and kill all of us or if there's something worth saving on Earth. And then she discovers that Earth's animals are just too cute, wanders into a cat cafe, and then she's trapped and her alien people discover the mighty cuteness of Earth's pets. You know, it's it's an anime about like pet ownership and how pet owners are fucking weird and may as well be aliens. It's just got a really fun sense of humor. Really cute. Otaku Elf, also not on the list. Darn, okay. 
Wish I had noticed that. Yeah, there's a few that aren't on this. But yeah, Otaku Elf would go... I'd say that one goes in banger. Otaku Elf is great. Otaku Elf is fantastic. It's a really cute little thing about um, a local shrine deity who is a reverse isekai elf who gets really into video games and anime because being immortal is boring and going outside is scary and frequently depressing. As long as Clueless Friend goes in banger, you can overload that category. Oh no, you, you put pressure on me, but I'm sorry, I gotta put it in good. I like, I enjoyed it, but like the animation is mid. Does not hit on the same level as The Dangers in My Heart or Skip and Loafer. It's, you know, it's cute, it's good. I can see why somebody would really love it. You know, it, it hits that sort of Tonori no Seki-kun itch but yeah i don't know like like i wanted to like my clueless first friend a lot but i feel like the animation just isn't where it needs to be considering where the the simplicity of the character designs lends itself to much better animation than what we get anyway yeah kamikatsu that's going in the good trash kamikatsu is it's hard for me to not call it trash based on how the first episode's paced and, and how it's animated and the fucking that cgi monster oh my god this is one of those ones where the cgi actually wraps around to so bad it's good territory now, the 8-bit sections are really cute it's got an amazing premise so the story is this kid of a cult leader his dad fucking throws him into the ocean in a barrel as part of like this insane ritual that he kind of just made up. Of course he fucking dies, but he wishes to be reincarnated in another world with no gods. Does get incarnated into this world with no gods, but the world has this like weird society built around like people have to kill themselves when the government tells them to. Yeah, it's, it's, this is like all these different layers. It goes from zero to hand job in four minutes. Like as soon as he gets isekai he wakes up to an HJ. Wild first episode. Opus Colors, on the other hand, mid as fuck. So it's about this future world where they got augmented reality artwork plays to all your senses, and that's like the future of artwork. And all these hot boys are going to an academy for people who make the, the artwork. The main hot boy, he's trying to like prove himself, but he's in the regular track. And then his former friend, the cool one who got too cool for the rest of the group and free, got too cool for the rest of the group. And he's off in the, the elite high school and not talking to him. But then, you know, they connect through art. It's so fucking excruciating. It's, it's tedious as shit and it's not, yeah, it's not good. It's not good. Um, portrayal of art is extremely simplistic and silly. I reincarnated in a world where chat GPT rules the world, but I have yaoi hands. K kinda. Yeah, I mean, that would imply that it has any kind of forward-thinking futurism to it whatsoever. Tonikawa. Um... Yeah, it's good. Tonikawa's good. I would say. I haven't seen the new season yet, but I talked about it in um, my rundown of all of Crunchyroll's original anime. Fun little love story. Does not punch above its weight, weight class in any way, shape, or form animation-wise, and that's a shame, because it could, and pretty, I'm pretty sure the director has made some pretty good shit. Yeah, he's also directing Magical Destroyers, and it's very obvious that all of his, like, make good animation attention is going to that one. But yeah, it's a really sweet, cute characters. I just feel like the low-quality animation holds it back, personally. Manga gets really good. Eh, it's good to hear. I don't remember anything about Mix. I watched, like... I watched the first episode, I know that. Yeah, it's one of those ones where the high school used to have a sports legend, and then a new kid comes to the school and tries to pick it back up. Yeah, mid... After Blue Lock especially, it's really hard to, like, get up any enthusiasm for a standard sports anime unless it does, like, really exceptional animation or really great hype building, you know? Haikyuu wannabe, yeah. I mean, I think it's like a follow-up to, like, a very old classic anime or something. Next, we've got Alice Gear Aegis Expansion. 
that's going right in the trash. That one, this anime, like, I watched episode zero of it, I think, and I, I felt like I was having some kind of seizure. I, I, my brain did not pick up half the stuff that was happening. It was like this idol contest where they got a race on a beach, but then one of them tries to cheat by summoning a ninja frog. Two of them combine into a superhero to fight it. Meanwhile, the other one gets on like a robot jet ski and episode zero has no relation to the TV series. That's what I've heard, but like also that's what I watched because that was what was out when I was trying to make the, the seasonal list. I've heard that it it's just boring too. I don't know. It's a different thing by itself. Okay, but yeah, I think it b belongs firmly in the trash. I'm gonna investigate it for the hottest trash. But yeah, I was I was confused as shit by that first episode, or by episode zero. What's the next one? That one is World Die Star, the acting one, and that's going, like I said, mid tier. It's got some cute animation and like likable characters, but its portrayal of acting as a craft is just, eh. You know, Beastars does it better. Kageki Shoujo, not Review Starlight, but also Review Starlight does it better. There's just so many anime about acting out there, and this is like right at the bottom of the heap. So, you know, it's just an idle thing, but they're actors. It's meh. Rokudo's Bad Girls. I feel like that's either good trash or trash. I'm, I'm leaning toward trash, but I've only seen the first episode, so it might pick up. Good trash. Yeah, I'd say good trash. So the main character inherits this magical scroll from his grandpa, makes it so that bad girls are attracted to him, and he's this wimpy little dork who's always getting bullied, but then the toughest girl in the school who can beat up anybody falls in love with him, and his bully's girlfriend falls in love with him. Second episode makes it good trash. I'll be the judge of that when I watch it on the hottest trash. The first episode was kind of like all over the place in terms of like pacing and a lot of jokes just didn't land. Also literally every student in the school but the MC is a delinquent. Sounds like Crow Marty High School. Sounds like I might enjoy that. Or maybe that's why I'm not enjoying it as much because I've already seen Crow Marty High School and I know the peak of that kind of humor. It's like a harem anime set up with like explicitly magical explanation for how the harem gets set up but all of the girls are really really scary. Try to finish these off in the next 20 minutes. Three hour stream, like was predicted by that one commenter. All right, next up, Run For Money, The Great Mission. So this one's an anime adaptation of a real game show. And unfortunately it's just kind of crap. But like the, the premise is cool. Like participants in the game show get set loose in an amusement park and they have to run away from like dudes in serial killer costumes until the timer runs out and they get money, and this is like, you know, an anime adaptation of the fiction. I can show you like five seconds and you'll see just not, you, you, you can see, you can see, not good. Seems like it, it should be fun, right? Like it seems like it should, like it's a very popular game show. Cool idea, it does not stick the landing. Next up, Gunma-chan season two. I will be straight with you guys, Yutunya, Boss Animal, Gunmachan, not watching those. That's not going on the list. Hell's Paradise is banger. New Shonen Jump series, or Jump Plus, I believe. I describe it as Seppuku Squad, group of condemned criminals who are sent to a magical island to retrieve the elixir of life in place of less expendable soldiers because everybody who's gone there has been fucking killed or turned into flowers. That's yeah, a banger, got incredible action. It's almost all bangers from here on out, honestly. Bloody good action. Main character rips a dude's throat out with his teeth. Goes hard, goes really hard. Super fun. Some points where I like question the logic, like, you know, cause they can't have explosive charges in their heads. They're each sent with an executioner who will kill them if they'll fall out of line, which kind of, defeats the purpose of sending expendable soldiers, but it's just so good. Enemy designs, yeah, are really cool. The animation's beautiful. The action is just impeccable. I mean, it's it's MAPPA. You gotta expect that from them at this point. Really good compositing, too. If it was just one executioner, I'd get it, but then they'd get overwhelmed in combat. It's a little, it's a little silly. All right, let's see. Megamine anime is a banger and not just because that's a great pun. 
Konosuba Explosion is a banger. Uh, yeah, it's more Konosuba, more Megumin. You get into the Crimson Demon Clan, who are just really fun, goofy characters. The lore around them is amazing. So, like, they were created by an otaku, and their entire culture is built around a fucking 12-year-old's Chunibyo idea of what cool is. Been a little more serious and less comedic than I expected. That's kind of fair. I mean... Megumin is a, a protagonist you can take a little more seriously than Kuzuma. She's, you know, a little bit more relatable, and without the rest of the crew, she can fall into, like, a different sort of rhythm. I like it a lot. I think that it satisfies me as a Konosuba fan, but gives me something different. And that's what I want from a spinoff. I don't just want the same fucking thing. We can get through this next one real quick, because all I have to say about Oshinoko is that you should watch it if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, and do not look up a single thing about the plot. Very good. Uh, incredible first episode. The way that it sets stuff up and pays it off is, is great. There is a reason if we go to MAL, I don't even have to go to anime. I can just go to top anime. It's right at the top. It's going to drop off eventually because the Brotherhood Defenders are insatiable. The first episode especially, it's an hour and a half long. The story of it is really, really tight, and it's going to suck you in. Just trust me on that. But yeah, if you got friends you like to watch anime with, bring them together for that one. Yeah, Kaguya author does idols. Yeah, it's from the creator of Kaguya-sama. That's important to mention. Just trust the pedigree going on it. Got a lot of bangers this season, and we're not quite... So here's the thing. I fell off Ancient Magus Bride the first season. I, I, I was enjoying it, didn't have time for it, and we watched other stuff instead. So I don't know how good this new season is need to catch up on it yeah i'm gonna i don't know if i should put it in banger or good i like i feel like because i haven't continued with it good but then when i think back to how well animated it is and everything i'm gonna put it at the upper tier of good just to be fair and to fill that out a little more because we got we got too many bangers on this list already. Ranking of Kings, though, that's going in the banger tier. The, this new season is like a series of side stories set throughout the story of season one. But, you know, it's more of those great characters that you love from, from season one of Ranking of Kings. More Boji, Despa, more Kage, more everything. It's, it's some of the feel-goodest, feel-good anime stuff ignoring the one the one elephant in the room for people who, who know what they're who know what that is you know ranking of kings is just immensely charming incredibly animated beautiful story um really tugs at your heartstrings it's a beautiful little animated fairy tale uh if you ever wished there could be an entire anime like legend of zelda the wind waker this is the anime for you will put a big smile on your face. Except all the bangers are ruining my sleep schedule. Mine too. And last, and also least, yes. <laughs> yeah, smartphone isekai. Yeah, that's going right in the banger tier. Nuclear waste tier. Yeah, I mean, maybe it's just trash. Maybe it's, yeah, I'd say it's trash. Could also call it comfort trash. This is like in a weird superposition between all three of these. Isekai smartphone is just, no, it's not quite the definition of mid. That's seven deadly sins. I, I am firm on that at this point. Before before watching all of seven deadly sins, I would have said it was fairy tale. It's good trash. Always has been. I don't know about that. I mean, it's comfort trash for sure. This is one I need to investigate for myself and see if it belongs in the hottest trash. Or, I mean, I could give it its own roast. I don't know. At any rate... We're at the end of the tier list now, and I am enjoying talking with you guys, but I am also getting, like... I mean, you can see how low I've sunk in my chair. I am getting very tired, so I think I should probably call it a night. I didn't put Blue Orchestra because I haven't seen Blue Orchestra, unfortunately. Is is Blue Orchestra good so far? I, I, I will find out when it eventually comes on a streaming platform in, in North America. Final... It's, it's out in Europe, I think. So, you know, for once, you guys get to experience the other end of that. Region locking sucks. All right. We're, I think we're going to call it for tonight. Thank you so much for coming out. It's been real fun hanging out with you. 
I'll see you guys on the next stream, which will definitely be this week. All right. Take it easy, guys. I will see you later.